Ecclesiastes 11.5 says, As you do not know what is the way of the wind, or how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child, so you do not know the ways of God who makes everything. Ecclesiastes 11.5 We do not know the way in which the wind goes, just as we are unsure where exactly the wind starts from, where its beginning point happens. And of course we have radars now with technological advancements, and we can predict and, and understand to a certain extent what the weather is going to be. Sometimes it's wrong, sometimes it's not. But we don't know the beginning point of where wind exactly develops and how that gust of wind flows. We don't, we don't know exactly how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child. And the scripture is very clear that those who are in the womb are persons. And we know that it's not just a cluster of cells. Those who are uh, morally in tuned with their consciousness and what uh, has been proven scientifically Science itself acknowledges that it is not just a cluster of cells in the womb, but it is another person. When a mother uh, who is pregnant dies in a car accident, it is labeled as two deaths, um, one for the mother and then one for the other child who is in the womb. But even though we have technology and we can see how uh, babies and uh, persons develop within the womb, how human beings continue the developmental process as the weeks and months go on. We still don't know, aside from knowing that God has created the process and made it, we don't know exactly how the bones all of a sudden begin to develop. Sure, we might be able to give some sort of a scientific explanation, but the why behind that is always answered by God. Science always describes how things are done, but it never describes why things are done. And so just as we don't know where the beginning standpoint of wind uh, occurs and where it is going and, and how the bones grow within a child within the womb, which is just a miracle in and of itself, so we don't understand the ways of God who has made everything. And anything that is evil is what God has made but has been used wrongly by our selfish, na selfish and sinful nature. But God has created everything. And we can't do anything without God. And so in understanding these kind of basic points that Solomon is helping us to portray, that we, we don't even understand uh, some of the simplest of things that are easy to understand conceptually, but to understand the why or its beginning officially, we can't understand. So how in the world can we combat God and say, God, you're in the wrong here? Uh, God, you know, I don't understand it, and just because, since it doesn't make sense to me, then it doesn't make sense at all. Um, Lord, you don't, you don't make any sense. We can never go against God and question him and dwell in the questioning. Of course, there'll be times where we're confused about the season we're in, why certain things are being permitted and allowed, why certain things are occurring, why friendships are distancing, why we're falling in prey to these certain uh, things that are maybe catastrophic or we're going through a, a tough season financially. Whatever it is, we can question God initially, but we must never dwell in the questioning because God has made everything. He is a way for everything. Genesis 50, 20 says that God is the only one who can make, he can turn evil to work out a greater good. Only God can do that. And so if God has made everything, then we need to not only acknowledge this on a head level, but also a heart level. We need to let our lives be led by the truth that God has made everything. He has determined everything as it should be. He has given us libertarian free will to either choose to accept or reject him, to follow him or to go our own way. And if we are walking with the Lord and, and we have become born again when we believe Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and we repent of our sins, we receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit helps us to walk in the way of righteousness. Not perfectly, because we are not perfect. We know the flesh is weak. We still battle with the flesh and the Spirit here in this life. But we also know uh, that as the Holy Spirit is leading, we are being sanctified and changed as we continue to walk down the road that God is paving for us. And when this occurs, when there's a bump in the road, there's a stumble, we go astray for but a time, we need to understand that God has made everything and certain things that come into our lives that are uncomfortable, 
that we don't like, that make us uneasy. God sees it all, and just as we can't even question how in the world the bones within the mother begin to develop and where the wind begins and the way in which the wind goes and will continue to go, so we don't need to question God because God alone has all knowledge. He is omniscient. He has knowledge of everything that could be, would be, what will be, what should be. God has all this knowledge, and we just need to merely accept that he has that and to just take it day by day. That is why Jesus says, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Sufficient is the day of its own trouble. And we know that to be true. We need to just focus on one day at a time. And as James says, we need to not say, oh, tomorrow I'm going to go do this and that, for we do not know what a day may bring. We just need to work in the day in which God has given and take it one day at a time. Because God is the one who has made everything. We don't know his ways. In an instant, he can turn things around. He can work out the evil that's happening for greater good. Only God can do this because we know from 2 Peter 3, 8, that a thousand years is as a day and a day is as a thousand years for God. And so God is never in a hurry or in a rush. His ways are far beyond our ways. His thoughts are far beyond our thoughts. But he is a good, faithful, loving, gentle, kind father. He's also holy and just, but he is loving and kind and merciful and he will get us through because he is faithful to the very end. So may we always remember that just as we can't even determine what way the wind is going or how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child, so we cannot even begin to ask or question or understand the ways of God who has made everything because God always works everything out for a greater good, especially for those who love him and are called according to his purpose.